You've probably heard a lot about VPNs and logging policies. Maybe you're shopping for a VPN and know that it's a big, serious topic. Maybe you already have a VPN and you're just reading through its logging policy for the first time right now. But the more important question that you should be asking is, does it matter? Seriously, why are VPN logging policies held up to such incredibly high standards? Why are they talked about so much? Well, I have good news and bad news. You want the bad news first? It's that when your VPN logs, it absolutely matters. But the good news? There's only a very specific set of logs that you should worry about. Confused? Well, that's understandable. Intrigued? I sure hope so, because that's what we're about to discuss. For Top 10 VPN, I'm Callum. Let's get started. If you didn't know, every reputable VPN will have a logging policy somewhere on its website. It might sometimes be under the terms and conditions or the privacy policy, but it's a fundamental piece of any serious VPN business. Within it, the VPN and the company or companies that run it will establish exactly what, if anything, it logs when the customers use the service. Now, given that most VPNs market themselves as privacy tools, this is understandably pretty important stuff, and certainly something that lots of people put emphasis on, and rightly so, we do the same. However, what's often not made very clear is just which logs matter, because the unpopular truth of it is that it's virtually impossible to keep no logs at all, but we'll get to that later. First, let's establish the logs that do matter. We'll start with the big one, the most obvious one, the one thing that you do not want your VPN or anybody keeping a hold of, your IP address. You're using a VPN to hide your IP address. The very last thing you want is for it to go from being retained by your ISP to being retained by another company. Some decent VPNs may log your IP address for the duration of your connection only, which can be okay if it can prove it has reliable enough infrastructure for that not to be a security risk, but anything longer than that is totally unacceptable. Next up is something that's almost just as bad. Your DNS requests, or to put it another way, the websites you visit. Once again, ask yourself, why are you using a VPN? What's the point of using one if your every move is simply going to be tracked and stored? Aside from the obvious security risk and the possibility that this data could be accessed by someone else, like a hacker or even the authorities, it's simply unnecessary. There's no reason for a VPN to do it, other than perhaps to make money by selling your browsing habits to advertisers. Those two logs sort of exist in a bracket of their own. They're code red and seeing them should signal that you absolutely do not use the VPN in question. But just beneath them is something that can be paired with them, and that's timestamps. Timestamps can be applied to almost anything and are effectively a way of tracking when you started and stopped doing something. Detailed timestamps are bad news no matter what they track. They're just way too specific and can be easily combined with other logs to help identify you. Finally, we have the VPN server IP address. You don't just need to be watching out for your own IP being logged. It's also a really bad idea for a VPN to log the IP it assigns you too. Think about it. If your original IP address is hidden, but logs have recorded what your substitute IP address is, then nothing's really changed, right? Your activity is still being logged. There's lots of other things that can be and are logged by VPNs, and while they may be acceptable on their own, if you combine them with any of the ones I've just mentioned, they instantly become a lot more identifying. So if those are the logs that really matter, then you might be asking, are there any VPN logs that don't matter? And the answer is, kinda? I'll caveat this by saying that flat out you always want as few logs as possible, however there are some that, on their own, cannot be used to identify you, and we think that they're a lot more forgivable. These common logs can include the date of your last connection, how much bandwidth you used, the total load of the VPN server you're connected to, uh, basic information related to the device you're using. It's all considerably less invasive for some logs to be retained if they're what we call aggregated too. But that's when the VPN stores the same piece of data from a wide number of users, but the data itself isn't directly linked to any one user. For example, the date you last connected to the VPN, combined with the amount of bandwidth you consumed, aren't great when paired together. But if they're aggregated and simply dumped onto a big list alongside thousands and thousands of other instances from other users, with no way to tie them back to you, well, then that's actually pretty harmless. Now let's say you've read and understood a prospective VPN's logging policy. Congratulations, you're a real VPN scholar ready to make a sensible and informed purchase. Only there's one more question to answer. How can you trust it? A VPN policy could just lie on its logging policy, right? Well, yeah, that is right, actually. A VPN or any other company could lie about anything they want, and plenty do. It happens all the time. Unfortunately, here's the part where you have to take a bit of initiative, use your newfound knowledge, and apply your powers of deduction to work out just how truthful a VPN logging policy really is. 
Personally, I think that a pretty smart way of analyzing a logging policy is to look at what the VPN stands to gain from lying about it versus what it stands to lose. Could a major multi-million dollar corporation be lying in its user agreement? Yep, sure could. Does it make sense for it to? Probably not, I think. VPNs are companies that rely on their reputation and their ability to keep your data anonymous. That sort of trust takes years to build and just one very public court case to destroy. Compare it to some new no-name VPN that's just popped up. Is it worth a small amateur operation lying to gain your trust? It just might be. In fact, looking back over a VPN's history is a great place to start. Has it ever been caught lying? Has it ever handed over data to the authorities that it should be impossible for it to have if we take its logging policy at face value? If you really care about this, it's worth diving into the track record of a VPN that interests you. It's also a smart idea to consider the level of detail in the logging policy. We've seen so many VPNs over the years publish logging policies that say, we don't retain any logs, or this is a no log service, followed by absolutely no more detail. That's bad, that's really bad. Not only is it very hard to believe that there's no logs retained whatsoever, it's also just lazy. It shows a lack of care and seriousness from a VPN service. The more detailed the policy, the better. And that actually leads us to our final point, and it's one you might not love to hear. It's next to impossible for a VPN to retain no logs whatsoever. VPNs are complex pieces of software that require hundreds or even thousands of employees to maintain. Modern, expensive infrastructure placed all around the world. Things break, things slow down, things go wrong. Just like any company running a service, VPNs need to have a baseline of analytics in place to keep these things working. VPNs have different priorities and principles, and they all draw that baseline at slightly different levels. It's up to you to find a VPN that collects a level of data that's acceptable to you, and to never allow logging of more personal information than you're comfortable with. But you have to keep your expectations realistic. Even with the best of intentions and the latest technology, a truly 100% zero logs VPN is very hard to create. We tried our best to do as much of this research as possible, and we try to be as informative and investigative as we can be in every review on top10vpn.com. So it's a good place to start if you're looking into VPNs and logging. I've put some links in the description to help you on your logging policy journey too. And while you're down there, why not leave us a like or even subscribe if you found this video helpful. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next one.